Hello everyone and welcome to my craft room. I have another Christmas card slash gift slash wrapping to show you tonight. And I promise this will be the last Christmas card for this year anyway. But I really wanted to show you this and I really wanted to leave it till last because I love that it is a card that's a gift that is the wrapping it's wonderful now these cards have been around for quite a while and I've made quite a few of them over the years but it's it's super special and the wow factor is always there always always there so I'm going to start from the beginning and show you right the way through how I do it and it's super simple and if you stick with me right to the end I've got a couple of other examples of other versions that I've done to show you now I am using cards of craft papers and cardstock just plain black because it goes so well with this gorgeous gorgeous paper let me move those out of the way for the minute and the paper is from this pad now I've had it for a couple of years it's called sparkle but remember I'm using up my stash so I'm using what I've got I've pulled out this is so pretty it's like snowflakes but they look like doilies I love the marbly effect of this one is just gorgeous too and look at this foiling the foiling on this can you see the sparkle on these trees and then this one the rose gold I'm sorry but I am just in love with rose gold at the moment more foiling on this one and the little reindeers and I'm going to show you why in a minute I especially love these little reindeers. It fits right in with the theme of this card. So pretty pinks and black and rose gold with a little bit of white thrown in. If you hear any snuffling, I've got a visitor with me tonight. Lacey Dog is sitting at my feet or trying to get comfortable sitting at my feet. Aren't you? Are you going to say hello? Say hello? No? She's looking at me like I'm an idiot, and I probably am. Anyway, Kaiser Craft, Kaiser Craft cardstock. Of course, I will be using my favourite art glitter glue. Let's get started. You will need for this card four sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. Now, this one is smooth on one side and sort of textured on the other side. I'm going to use the textured side as the outside of my card, which means that I will be cutting from the textured side too. Right, now, what we're going to do first, though, is take the first sheet of 12 by 12 paper cardstock. Get your scoreboard if you've got one or um, my paper trimmer has a scoring blade on it let me make some room for it here and we are going to simply on this paper pop it in and cut off the little branding strip and I'll make sure that it is at 12 by 12. Line it up. Yep. I can save that for something else. Now, scoring. So I've moved the cutting blade down. We are going to score at 8 inches. And then again at four inches, lining it up. 
I'm going to turn the cardstock and we're going to score at 8 inches and then again at 4 inches so we have 9 squares on this first sheet. Now you, can you, oh yes you can see the score line. Okay, that's the first sheet. We'll do all the scoring at once, get it out of the way. Second sheet, again we'll cut the branding strip off. Um, these are just plain black, lining it up at 12, just to make sure it is 12 square. Right. Now this one we're going to score at a slightly different size because we're now going to cut this one down to 11 and a quarter. There's the 11, there's the quarter. So we cut it down to 11 and a quarter. Keep that strip, turn it around, cut it to 11 and a quarter. And I'll keep that one too. Now, scoring for this one is at seven and a half inches. And three and three quarters. This is three and three quarters. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see. I've moved out of. There we go. Three and three quarters. Okay, you probably still can't see because. Right. Oops, nearly cut it. Three and three quarters. So seven and a half. Seven and a half. And three and three quarters. Okay, and again we will have nine squares on the cardstock. And that is showing up perfectly. All right, the third piece of black cardstock. Again, I'm going to cut the branding strip off. I'm going to make it 12 by 12, make sure it's 12 by 12. I could just cut it, but I need to square it up. Okay, third sheet is 10 and a half, 10 and a half inches. So we're going to cut it down to 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Notice how I'm sliding my cutting blade down to the bottom and pushing up. That's because I'm holding the paper, the cardstock up here to hold it firm. I'm pushing up so that it actually pushes up into the rest or the stopper or whatever you want to call it. It just holds it in place better. Ten and a half. Pull it down. Slice it up. There we go. Now these we score at seven inches. Line it up at seven, move the cutting blade. And three and a half on two sides. So there we go. Seven. Line it up. Nearly turned it, didn't need to turn it, and three and a half. Simple. Okay. Right. Now, that's all the scoring done for the moment. We will be doing some more, but I'll move that out of the way. Now, we're going to take our three sheets. And they've each got nine squares on them. 
we are going to cut away each corner square. Let me put a pencil. We're going to cut away that one, that one, that one, and that one, and that one, that one, that one, and that one. So we're left with a cross shape. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Now, if you have a paper trimmer and you are really clever with it, you can use your paper trimmer to do the cutting. Otherwise, where have my scissors gone? I thought I had everything ready before I sat down and now I can't find the scissors. Let me bring my little bag over. My little bag of tricks. Got everything but the scissors. Pens galore. Oh, well. Wonder what I did with them. All right. We'll just use these. Doesn't matter. Scissors are scissors. And if I have to stop and get them, we will. Now, this is going to be a bit tricky. You can probably see it better than I can. But I'm going to cut on that line. And then I'm going to turn it and cut on the line. So cutting pretty much through the center of the line into the corner. Nope, didn't get that quite right. Okay. There we go. Still didn't want to come out. All right. Get rid of that. We don't need it for this project. Okay, guys, I'm just going to pause you for a moment because I do need to find the other scissors. They are too small. They will take me too, too long to um, cut everything out. I'll be back. Got our three pieces of cardstock. Now, these all need to be matted up and decorated. So I'm going to start with the biggest one first, which is going to be the first layer. And the mats for this need to be three and three quarters by three and three quarters because we want a little bit of a black border around it. So I've chosen, I think, because I'm going to go dong, dong. Dong, dong, I think. Don't worry about the middle. You don't need to decorate the middle. You can if you want to, but nobody's going to see it. I'm going to do these because these flaps will essentially be pretty much covered up. And because I'm using six by six paper, I'm not going to get four four inch square pieces out of them. so I'm going to mix it up a bit and that's okay we can do that because we're going to make it our own all right paper trimmer to the rescue let me get it in I'm going to cut two at a time which means that I am actually going to do it at the bottom then so that I can cut down into them four inches. There we go. Just swing it around. Make sure both pieces are lined up and it's on the floor. Go up. And again, I'm cutting down because it's pushing the paper down into the bar. And then we've got these. Now we're going to go like this again, doing two at once. Bring it up, slide it down, and we want this to show, don't we? We want this, I want this to be able to be seen, so I am going to turn it this way. I had to stop and think. If you do have a directional print in your paper, Think before you cut which way is going to be because this is the top of each flap. Which 
way you're going to put it. Okay, they are done. Now for the next layer, what do I want to do? It will be seen a bit more, but not quite as much as the top layer. I really want that and I think that maybe for the top. So I'll put those aside. I want one of those for the lid. All right. So the middle layer, that leaves me these. I'm happy with that. And the middle layer we cut at... Um, Three and a quarter. Gonna stop and think. Um, you know what? Can't think. Can't do basic math in my head. Let's get it and measure it. Easy fix. And that is at three and three quarters. So we do it at three and a half. Our mats for this are three and a half. Let's see if that was longer. So same thing, cutting it down to the bottom so that I can hold it in place because I'm doing two. Slicing down, turning around, three and a half. And like that. And with this one. Um, okay. I want it to go like that. Okay. All right. Again, with this, I want the waves to go. That had to be three and a quarter. Sorry. So I need to trim another quarter inch off that. Three and a quarter. What happens when you don't think before you slice? Three and a quarter. And that's the second layer. And then the third layer, which is the smallest one. Hmm, look what I did. Did that layer right and that layer wrong. So we will be swapping things over. Let me get the pad and see what my choices are. Cut those. Where did I put it? I had it in the dark a moment ago. So I cut those too small. And that's all right. We do that, don't we? We all have. Oh, it's pretty. I've only got one of those, so. Two of those. Two of those. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Two of those. It'll teach me to pay attention to what I'm doing. All right, now, these are three and a half, aren't they? Yes. Okay. Two at three and a half. Now that's slightly. There we go. Three and a half. Cutting down. Three and a half. See, it's real life. Perfect. Okay. These ones are three and a quarter. And that's what I'm going to cut. These out of so I just love this reindeer so three and a quarter and you'll see why I want the reindeer in the middle in a moment and you put it all together okay three and a quarter and Do 
I really want to do that one or do I want to do something else? I'm second guessing myself now. I shouldn't do that, should I? to make these a bit darker we'll save that for something else and I'll use this I will be happier with this three and a quarter down and around now we are just about ready for assembly keep all these bits because we can use them for decorating and on other projects I've had this pad for a while. Okay. Now, one last thing we need to do is before we assemble the biggest, um, before we assemble the biggest base, the base is we need to cut. I told you to keep all the scraps because we need them. And there they are there. Yep. We need one and where's those strips of card okay and we need to keep these two okay perfect because we need to make little we're going to make little bars to fit across there um, it'll all make sense in a minute now these need to be three and three quarters because that's how one we need four of them two three and three quarters four okay four of those and we're going to cut paper to go on top of them and that is just let me make sure I know how wide it is. It is just over two centimeters. It is two. I can't see two point no, two centimeters. Okay, how's that? So we'll cut a two centimetre strip, two centimetres, like so, and like so, and Hannah just nodded to me, she's come in. So if you hear moaning and groaning in the background, that'll be my girly laughing at me talking to myself while I'm doing this. Oh, I can't get it to hold still hand. There we go. All right. Uh -huh. I said three and three quarters, didn't I? Three and three quarters. everything together time so we're going to take the biggest piece and this is the base we are going to start by laying out our 
Okay, so I want the top to be seen. It goes that way. That way. Okay. I want a bit more of the border. I'm trimming another quarter of an inch off these. I want more of a border. I didn't like that. As my friend Pamela used to say, make it your own. So that's what we're going to do. Right. Get up. And that goes like that, just so that they're the same. Give me an extra quarter inch. There we go. I think I'll be happier with that. Let's see. Now I'll bring it back over. Much happier with that. Nice, neat little border around. That's what I want. I wonder if I cut them the wrong size to start with. I might have. Okay, we're going to stick these down. Hot glitter glue to the rescue. You can use tape runner. Oops. So you've got to be careful. Can you see how that's smushed out? Not too much. Um, you don't want to use, don't do too much with this stuff and not right near the edges because we don't want it to smush. Now, let me see. I can make sure it's lined up evenly on three sides. It should be lined up evenly on the bottom. I'm happy with that. Here we go. Now, someone asked where I get this from. I have two places that I get my art glitter glue from. One is Bev's Cross Crafts in Tasmania. If you're not in Tassie, you can look them up online. It's a fascinating place. I could spend hours and hours and hours and hours in that store. And the first time I went there, Wayne said, oh, I'll just wait in the car for you. Oh my goodness, I was so overwhelmed. I didn't know where to start looking. Um, and really, really nice and really, really helpful people. And the other place I get it from is Creative Dreams in Baronia here in Melbourne. And they're just on Dorset Road in Baronia. And Marion and the girls are really nice and so so helpful um okay done now we're going to take those strips that we cut and we are going to lay out the black ones while that dries the four black ones i'm going to turn over the white ones and we're going to make our little bridging pieces. I'm going to stick those on and stick that on like that, and it just goes just like that. Turn it over because the pink is going to be slightly bigger than the black, so you can't see it. Can you hear Lacey Dog? She's talking to the next door neighbor's dog. Did you hear the reply? She loves to get out there and bark at the fence and at the dog. It's really quite funny. 
Here she comes, like a herd of elephants as she bolts through the house. Okay. Put this on there. Oh, move it down. It's the benefit of working with liquid glue. You've got wriggle room, wriggle time. I have to say, I do love this stuff. Dries really fast. It's really, really strong too. Here we go. I'll have it like that. No. Move it up. Okay. It's our four bars. Now, we are going to put them there. Oh, I should have done plain ones for these, but it doesn't matter because they don't actually really get seen. Put my pin back in to keep it open. Somewhere in here I have pop dots. Here we are, pop dots. On the back of them I am going to put some pop dots or dimensionals or whatever you want to call them. I'm going to put three on each one, just like so. Center them because you don't want them to be seen. Ah, she been out in the pool. She was lacy dog was really funny before floss. She was um, trying to sit on my feet. She must have thought it was she was at home. Where's my pokey tool? There we go. Take the backing off because I'm thinking I might want to double stack these. And that just means I get another one and put it on top. I think that will be perfect. Now I'm doing this, we're doing this because we want, we want our, our box arms to pop up. We don't want them to just be flat and blur. We want them to pop up because we're making a box of sorts. Okay. Sometimes I think it's easy with my fingernail. Right, that's one done. Go through and. Get rid of all these little dots. Has anyone else save these dots? They make great little eyes and polka dots on cards. If you're doing um, caterpillar cards, they're really good for that. Because we get so many of them. Yeah. Card making. Here we go. Stuck to me. So from next week, only in my craft room that happen. From next week, I'll be doing teacher gifts and little thank you gifts. And I've got some wrapping, really cute little wrapping ideas to show you. See, Lacey agrees. She wants to see them. She's looking forward to me making those videos, aren't you, Lacey Dog? All right. Mm, yes. Okay. All right. Now, all we're going to do is very carefully put these away because we don't need them anymore. Move those out of the way. Bring this back so you can see. And I am just going to lay this just so it's at the top of the patterned paper on all four sides just like that and it'll be there we go
I made four. Oh, couldn't see it for looking. Yeah. Don't mind me. Oh, I was going to say, not again. Oh, suck. Right, that's that one done. Now, what we're going to do is carefully just bring it up and fold it in. Just like that. One layer done. I bet you breathe a sigh of relief. Okay. Second layer. We are just going to stick on our bits. We've got, oh yeah, they're all right. I'm happy with that. Okay. But before we do that, with this layer, what we're actually going to do is use our bone folder to crease the lines, to crease the folds. Make sure that they line up. All right, you can see how now it's got a bit of dimension to it. Perfect. Like that, like that, like that. All right, where's that glue gone? Let's stick this down. Now, you'll be shaking your head and going, this is too much work and it takes too long. It's not really. It doesn't really. Because once you get into it, it's really good. So we're going to do that oh, like that. What did she do? Lick you. <laughs> Lacey's just saying hello. Just saying hello, aren't you, Lacey dog? Hmm? All right. Centre it. Dear, what didn't you like? Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. hey, what's wrong? Am I ignoring you? Is that the problem? I'm not giving you any attention. All right, second layer done. Now we're on to it. Does work quite once you once you get your act together and get everything done. It goes fast again. We're going to fold. On the line, make sure they're square. Use your bone folder. Now, I hmm, heard somewhere, watched someone on YouTube, I'm not really sure who because I can't remember, with the bone folder, instead of doing that, use the center part of your, of it, and you get a much better crease. Hmm. Now, <laughs> lazy dog. Right. Now, these are directional. So, I need to decide if I want it like that. And this is directional. So, I want it to go like that. Or do I want it to go like that? I want it to go like that. And... We will put okay. Right, let's get these stuck down. Can you zip around. Make sure I put it in the right direction. We're nearly finished. Almost finished. That's very exciting. <coughs> Lacey, be quiet. No barking or you'll have to go to bed. Do you want to go to bed? <laughs> Do you want to go to bed? Oh, no barking. No. No. 
So everybody wants to know that you're right. working. symbol our box we've got three pieces we're going to stick this bit to this bit to this bit to this bit so turn it over and we're going to put glue all the way around there just like that and we are going to dries fast. Don't even worry about it. Then we're going to put this one but I need to get close to see it. All right. Okay. Now, that folds up like that and makes a nice box. But what we're going to do is put something in the middle. And I'm going, I am going to use, I think, this. So I'm going to cut a piece of this. That is three and three quarters because that's a four inch square. Three and three quarters. By three and three quarters. No, it's not a four inch square. Don't mind me. Oh my goodness gracious me. It is three and a quarter. Honestly. I'll put all the measurements um, in the description box for you. Because um, if you're trying to follow along with me, you'll be well and truly lost by now. Okay, that's what I want. Let's glue that down and then we'll make the lid. The lid will be black, but I am going to use that pink Christmas, that pink foiled Christmas tree paper to decorate decorate it center that up there we go Ta -da. see okay right now let's get the lid done to make the lid I'm checking my notes, guys, because seriously, I do not, do not trust my, okay, I do not trust my memory, <laughs> not tonight anyway. Alrighty, last piece of cardstock, it needs to be cut out. And one eight inches. So that's there. Okay. 
six and one eight inches is there. Beautiful. And then it needs to just be scored at one inch on all four sides because we're making like a little box. So put the arm away. Lacey dog's back again. Move it over. You can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. On my paper trimmer, I've got inches and centimeters. Now I work in inches because it's easier to do the fractions. That might sound silly, but it's easier to do six and an eighth inches rather than fifteen point two five centimeters because that half a centimeter too small uh, that half a mil is too small and you might think it doesn't make a difference but it actually does so cutting blade out of the way and scoring turn it round move it to one inch what also makes a difference is when I line it up to the inch, do I put it just touching the mark on the mark or at the far side of the mark? Whichever way I do the first one, I have to do the other three. That tiny fraction makes such a difference to your finished product. You wouldn't think it does, but they all add up. All those little tiny slivers add up over all the materials, the measurements and cutting you do in a project. Okay. Right. Now, remember I said this has a smooth side and a textured side. I want the textured side to be the top. So I'm burnishing all four sides so just make sure the ends line up so that it's square that helps all right now scissors we're going to make the cuts to make the box so I'm going for this, these cuts, I'm going to cut on the inside edge. So that the, um, the bump from the score line is almost cut off. Then on each flap, flappy bit, just trim off a sliver. You see what I'm doing? It's black card, so it's hard to see. Just a wincy sliver. Doing that just helps the flap to sit square and it gives a much better finished look to your um, to your lid. Okay, now before we stick it all together, we're going to cut our piece of paper for the top. I'm going to double check the measurement because I'm pretty sure it should be 4, four and an eighth so I'm going to go quarter inch under so that's 3 and 7 eighths. I'm going to make, cut my paper to 3 and 7 eighths. Three and seven eighths. 
The other good thing about this um, Stampin' Up! paper tripper, it actually goes down to 16 of an inch, which is really good. Yes, sometimes. That's going to fit in there just like that. All right. Let's bring it over and we'll get it all put together. And I can let you all go. Decorate the flaps if you want to. Um, hmm. I'll think about it. Right. Now, glue on flap. Take it, fold it in, bring it round and line up the corner and it fits perfectly hold it for a second you saw how fast this stuff dries same deal bring it round fold it in line it up so that it's square If you want to use tape, you can use tape. If you want to use um, glue dots, you can use glue dots. Use whatever adhesive you've got. Mm. Okay. Ta-da! Lid done. Now, to make this super special and make it the card that's the gift and the gift wrapping as well, you simply take your card, if you can find it. Where did I put it, Hannah? Ah, here it is. I've lost it. Sorry, guys. Okay, before we do anything, we're going to test to make sure the lid fits. We want the lid to fit snugly, but not be so snug that it cannot lift on and off easily. So, there it is. Open it up. And we are going to put in one of these. A little snow globe and it's a rose gold deer which is why I wanted I'll show you why I wanted the rose gold deer in the first place you can't see but how cute is that and it fits in there and it goes up like this and up like this fold up your box pop the lid on And it's done. No, it's not because there's corner lifting there. So let me just put a bit of glue under there. There's a drop. Now, you can take it further if you want to. And you can decorate all the flaps with um, ephemera, with little tags, with all sorts of things. Or you can leave it just as it is. And you can write your message on one of these squares. But it is, there it is. Now, when I give these, I blue tack the little snow dome to the centre. And I just put a little note in to say, lift me up and turn me on. Because that's so, so pretty. So, so pretty. All right. 
Now, you can decorate the outside of your box if you wish to. We haven't tonight. We've just left it plain. I've done the top. If you want to do the sides of the lid, go right ahead. You can do pretty much whatever you want and make it your own. Now, that's what we did tonight. Here's one I did earlier. This. This one. Now, with this one, I did decorate the outside. And I decorated all around the lid. I used red cardstock and just on the inside flaps. Now you'll notice you can't see there's one of the bands and I put them on the second layer for this one because I wasn't putting anything special in the middle so it didn't need to stay flattish it can pop up this but I've used um, cutouts to decorate around here that was this one and then I want to show you one more one more I've decorated the front with some cutouts and um, stickers and a little sentiment and then one more and this one just plain box this one I went to a bit more trouble and we've made it a memory box so we've got this one now this one has pockets in it all these little flaps it's a little pocket I put on there there's little pockets there decorated both sides of all of these flaps and then I went through and cut out little tags so you can use them for journaling or making notes and they just pop in the little pockets, little journaling tags. You can make it a Christmas memory book. How pretty they are. So, so pretty. And they all just... Fit in. You can't see my hands in the way. There you go. Fit in. Pop in. So if you have someone on your list who likes journaling, who likes um, memorabilia, keeping, um, doing Christmas albums and things, something like this would work. Trust me. Something like this would be ideal. And really, they don't take all that long to make. The hardest decision for me is always choosing the paper, the cardstock and the designer paper. And it just all folds up again and the lid goes on. And there it is. Now I have one more. Last one. This one isn't Christmas. This one is a birthday or any occasion really. And again, the box has been decorated on the outside we decorated the lid top we cut those fussy cut those out of some paper and then you open it up inside and it says sweet wishes now we do actually have cupcake bath bombs that we put in these ones which is really nice because it's a gift in a card in the gift wrapping so we put little cupcake bath bombs in them I fold them all up, put the lid back on, oops, right on, and my big clumsy fingers, put the lid on, and there it is, another one, so we've got four different kinds that you can do, different things you can do with them, so by far this one is my favourite. <laughs> I do like all the little bits but this is by far my favorite but that's how easy it is to make an exploding box card now I did the whole thing from scratch with you tonight talking to you it's much faster if I'm not talking to you <laughs> and trying to record things at the same time anyway 
If you've made it this far, thank you so much for joining me. And I really hope that you enjoyed making, ah, I've lost it, making the exploding box card with me. Oh, these little, little um, lights, so cute. Got them on clearance at Kmart, 50 cents. Always, always look for things like this, Boxing Day sales or Christmas Eve. Who wants to go to the shops on Christmas Eve? But really, and pick them up super, super cheap. I'm pretty sure, did we clear the shelf of these little domes, Hannah? We sure did. We, I think we cleared the shelf. We got about 10 or 12, didn't we? Mm -hmm. For 50 cents each. So, and I just keep them. In my stash to break out to use whenever but when I saw this beautiful paper with the black and rose gold I remembered I had this and that's what inspired this exploding box card hope you've enjoyed it if you have let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions let me know in the comments below I will put the measurements in the description box for you so until next time, happy cheapskating and happy crafting.